Satellite Images A friend of mine showed me how to use Google Maps. I'm sure you've seen it. It lets you use satellite images to look at locations all over the world. A few years ago, I was in a car accident. Since then, I don't really leave the house. It's difficult. And the idea, the mere idea of seeing a car drives by makes me feel lightheaded. I was fascinated by the fact that I could see all over the world, almost like being there. I could virtually walk down the street and almost feel like I was really there. I became instantly hooked. It gave me a real eye on the world. I could go see almost any major city, and I did. I'd seen the streets in China, Japan, Germany, England, so many places. I've even gone to tourist attractions, like the Great Barrier Reef or Dracula's Castle. My favorite was to go to random places in major cities, though, and see how many people and animals I could find. The faces of the people there were blurred to protect their privacy, but I still found it enjoyable to see them out there, enjoying their life, walking like it was no big deal. She must have good taste, I laughed. I zoomed in closer and noticed the gray bag she carried on her shoulder. She was walking in a relaxed manner, one hand trailing the wall beside her. I bet that if I could see her face, I would have seen that she was smiling. I began to feel sad. I let my hands fall onto the side of the wheelchair and looked at her for a minute more. I wished I could be there, walking so carefree with her. That wouldn't happen, though. Until I died, I was stuck in this chair. I sighed and zoomed out of Tokyo. That was enough for tonight. I turned off the computer and went to bed. I got up early and decided to look around Paris. Paris is always fun. I like the look of the city, with all of the old beautiful buildings and so many people to watch. I randomly zoomed into an area and saw a street lined with old brick buildings, a few small shops, and an old tan brick church. Ahead was an intersection. Dozens of people walked by. A bald businessman walked by quickly, looking at an old woman, her hair covered in a scarf, carrying a large purse. A curvy woman in black pants that were too tight stared out into a store window. Two women led a group of children around a corner. I spun the view a few more times, and then I saw something peculiar. Sitting on the bench at the bus stop were two people. One of them was a young woman who had her feet stuck out in front of her in a relaxed manner. She was wearing a pair of red sneakers, like my own. I was startled for a moment when I noticed the black pants, the white shirt, and the black hooded jacket. Her dark brown hair was tied loosely behind her. A gray bag sat on the bench beside her, the shoulder strap hooked over her shoulder. This is crazy, I thought. That can't possibly be the same woman. This is another country, a different continent even. How could it be her? This was stupid. It wasn't as if these were live photographs. These had to be taken ahead of time and then stored. It's not like she was in two places at once. She could just be a traveler. Besides, without seeing her face, it was impossible to tell if it was the same person or not. Brown hair was probably the most common hair color in the world. And those red sneakers were something I purchased online. I'm sure a million other people did too. I shook my head and went to go fix some lunch. When I got back online, I decided to look at Berlin. I picked a random street, as usual. It looked pretty empty. There were brick buildings lining the street, but they looked more like factories than anything else. There were also empty lots, full of long grass and just piled gravel. There wasn't much to see at all, really. There were a line of motorbikes and a car with two German flags sticking up from it. After more searching, I found a kid. He looked like he was dressed for school. A brown jacket and his bag. He was intently looking at something on a mobile device of some kind. I was disappointed and I started to leave. But then I caught something out of the corner of my screen. I turned the view and there, there were those damn red sneakers. 
She was standing on a street corner next to some kind of signpost. She had a hand on the post looking down at the street, as if she was waiting to cross. I stared in just shock. How could she be there too? Even if she was traveling, there was no way I could find her every single time. Even just finding her in Paris was one heck of a coincidence. But this? This is crazy. Was this some kind of joke? Had Google decided to play a prank on its users that used their products so much? It would have been a great joke. I did a quick search looking for a note about the woman that shows up like Waldo. There was nothing. I looked through articles on strange things you can see on Google Maps, but none of them even mentioned the woman that travels the world with you. This is crazy. Had my self-imposed isolation driven me mad? Had I become so lonely that I created a hallucination for myself? Leaving Berlin on the screen, I sent a text message to a friend, asking him to look at the locations. I asked him if he saw the same woman. Then, I waited. Hands sweating, heart thumping in my chest. I jumped when the phone beeped with a return text message about 10 minutes later. The text read, I see the lady you're talking about in Berlin, but I don't see her in Paris or Tokyo. Is this some kind of game or what? You okay? I didn't respond, instead returning to the locations in Tokyo and Paris. There she was, there she was! But it was different. She no longer sat at the bus stop bench in Paris. She was standing in front of it, looking for something in her bag. In Tokyo, she was blocks away, bending down to pet a calico cat. I shivered. Who was she? What was happening? I switched the map to Brussels. It was another city street. It was lined with old-looking buildings, with shops on ground level, and what I guessed were apartments above. I quickly scanned the streets. They were empty, other than a stocky woman in a bright blue sweater. I did a second sweep. She wasn't there. I sighed in relief. I couldn't believe I was getting so worked up about this. It, you know what, it was nothing but a co- I stopped. My eyes stayed frozen on the screen. There was a building at the point in a fork in the road. White with a black ironworked frame balcony jutting out from the second floor. I hadn't seen her as I'd been looking along the sidewalks. But there she stood, standing on the balcony, head tilted towards the direction of the camera almost like she was coyly looking toward me. My breath caught in my throat. I switched over to Sydney. She was leaning against the wall inside the doorway of a bright blue Carrick's pharmacy building. London. It showed her getting ready to step onto a red double-decker bus. Her head turned over her shoulder. She was everywhere I looked. She stood on the side of a brick sidewalk in the building in Venice. She walked across a yellow barred crosswalk in Zurich. And in Hong Kong, she stood between Wing Lung Bank and a McDonald's, adjusting the strap on her bag. In every picture, she came closer and closer to looking directly at me with her blurred out face. My heart felt like a terrified bird slamming inside of my chest. I couldn't catch my breath. I wasn't sure what to do. I couldn't call the police. Should I just send screenshots to Google? I clenched my fist tightly and closed my eyes. Who was she? Why was she following me? Was I following her? I wish, I just wish I could see the expression on her face. To know what she saw when she looked back at me. I wanted to get out of the chair and run. How is it that the only thing that made me feel kind of free again was the thing making me feel even more trapped? I had to know. I typed in the name of my town and zoomed in on a random street. It was a couple of miles from my house. The gates to the city park were shown in the clarity of daylight, despite it being nighttime. There she was. There. She was there. She was only a few miles from my house, standing under the ironwork arch that stated the name of the park. She looked directly into the camera, directly at me. I felt like I was going to throw up. 
She was near me. She was watching me. She was coming for me. What did she want? I typed in the name of the apartment complex where I live. I could see the outside of the building. The parking lot was just full of cars. There were a few blurred out children on the playground. I searched everywhere for her. She wasn't in the parking lot or the sidewalks, not hiding between the buildings or standing at the playground. I even scanned each one of the cars individually, behind the bushes, everything, each one of the blurred out windows. She wasn't there. I curled tightly around myself and laid my head down on the desk. This place was safe. I didn't leave the apartment anyway. I would never use Google Maps again. I would never have to see her again. She could stay in that park for all I cared. I smiled to myself and was surprised to find a tear slipping down my face. I'm safe, I said in a whisper, and it felt good to hear it out loud. I'm safe. As I said it, there was a knock at the door. A chill ran down my spine. I had a camera hooked up to my computer that would show me who's at the front door, which made it easier for me with my mobility issues. I slowly reached for the control to show myself who was outside, but my hand trembled furiously. As I touched the control, I realized my mistake. The last of the Google images that I had seen were just the outside of the building, not the inside. I looked at the screen and saw a woman in a white t-shirt, black pants, and a hooded jacket, carrying a gray bag with purple and gray shoulders striped on the shoulder strap. Of course, of course there were the red sneakers. She looked directly at the camera. Her face, her face, her face was still a complete blur. I tried to stifle a scream. She raised a hand and knocked loudly on my front door. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I would like to thank my $10 and above patrons in order, naturally. Dan R. Paul Z. Mr. Swiston. Official Jerboa. Chaos X. JY. Pyromancer. Hayden MH and Ethan A. And of course, all of you down in the description who joined at the $5 tier. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want your name read off at the end of every video and access to some Patreon-only content please consider joining.